Hey everybody, this is a quick intro video lecture about t-tests, where I'm going to be telling you the difference between the t-tests that we're going to learn in Unit 2, starting with the one samples t-test. So you've been learning about z-scores, so why don't we just use z-scores for all the statistics that we're going to cover? Well remember, to get a z-score, we have to know something about the population average and something about the population variance. But when do you know those things? Very rarely in research do you ever have everyone who's in a population in your study. The few times that we do this is called a census. So in a census, you have everybody in your research study, and then you can easily find the average and the variance. But that's not how most research is. It's very costly and time consuming to do a census. So instead, what all research is based on is about drawing a sample out of your population and just taking a few humans in that sample. When we have a sample, we don't know this variance for the population. We can find the average of the sample, and we can find the sample variance, which is sometimes called variance or your standard deviations. So we can find that for this because we have everybody here in our sample, we have them. But we can't always find that out about a population. Even when we find sometimes an average for a population, it's very hard to find the variance because without every single one of these scores, I can't calculate a variance. So that's why we can't use z-scores is because we often don't have this. What do we use? Well, we use a t-test. In general, a t-test is going to use the sample variance in place of the population variance, since we don't know it, so that we can run our statistics. When we think about t-tests, there are three types. There are one sample t-test, independent sample t-test, and paired sample t-test. The neat part is that it's easy to tell the three apart. In a one sample t-test, you have one sample, hence the name. And what you're doing is you're comparing that one sample to a known population average. Why don't you just use a z-score? Well, because you don't know the population variance. We're going to use the sample variance instead. We will get more into this later, but spoilers alert. An independent samples t-test has two groups, group one and group two, because a t-test usually means two things. Either one sample to a population, that's two things. Two groups, that's two things. Or paired samples teach us, which is two measurement points, two things. But there's two groups, group one and group two. And we're trying to see, is there a difference between these two groups? We don't do anything about a population in our independent samples. It's all about what's in the samples. In a paired samples t-test, there's not two groups, but there are two measurement points. We take one group of people, we give them a pretest on something, then we manipulate the IV however we want to manipulate it, and then we give them a post test. And what we're looking to see is did they change over time because of my independent variable manipulation. The class is kind of like this. You took a pretest, then you're going to take the whole class, then you're going to take a post test. And we're trying to see if this class is an effective manipulation of a delivery of education. For this module, we're going to be focusing on the one sample t-tests. Again, a one samples t-test is where you take one sample and you're comparing them to something we know about a population. And while that's not the most frequent type of t-test that you might read in, say, published literature, it is still a very important tool. For example, you've probably heard something on Facebook or in the media about how Millennials or kids today are so different than everybody else. Well, that's not true. And <laughs> if you took lifespan with me, then you'd know that that's not true. But it's not true for lots of historical reasons. But let's say I wanted to test how true it was. So lots of places do 
data analysis, where they come up with national averages. How much time people spend on their phones? How much time people spend watching TV? How many drinks of coffee on average do people have a day? But all these averages that you're inundated with in some of this research never say anything about variance. They never say how wide the spread is. And a mean or an average by itself means nothing. I need to know that variance to have any idea of how wide the spread is. But let's say I have that average. I want to know how my unique group of humans is in comparison to that. Do these humans drink as much coffee as the national average? Do these humans really play on their phone more than the national average? Do these humans truly work longer hours than the national average? All of those are really important questions. And so those are questions that we can answer with a one samples t-test. We have that average that someone else has found for us. We find a sample, we get whatever is their average and their variance, and then we compare. That's the whole point of a one samples t-test. Hopefully that's clarified this concept and introduced you to this module. Remember, if at any point you have any questions about what you're reading or what you're learning, post them to the FAQ board so that we can get them answered so you can be successful. I'll see you online.